What exactly does it take to develop and deliver innovative world-class e-mountain bike systems? A system that comprises of the motor, the remote, the display, the software, the battery, and of course, the app. Well, concept, design, prototyping, testing, and engineering are all the things we're gonna be exploring at TQ in Bavaria. TQ, who are they? Where do they come from? And what does it mean? Well, it's pretty simple. Technology and quality. Now, the roots are a one-time cow shed in the Blue Lakeland of Bavaria, Germany. It was formed in 1994 with two people, but has grown to an international tech company employing over 1,700 people worldwide. For over 25 years, TQ have grown an immense business, which, as e-bikers, many of us might not know so much about but we need to. Their knowledge of electronics design is massive and they're able to tap into years of knowledge gained through robotics, space travel, including space stations and Mars rovers, medical robots and automation. Wow, this really is proper. This isn't just one small step. This is a giant leap. And I have to say, if I was a motor manufacturer, I'd be very afraid. Now over here, it actually is the production line of the TQ HPR 50 system out in Inning. This is where all the manufacturing takes place. Here in Inning, we uh, assemble all the parts we produce at TQ, like all we need for the HPR drive system. So the production line itself, designed, created, and manufactured by TQ as well. Also the Franca robots, which we use, they are also made by TQ. The advantage of this is that the engineers are here in 30 seconds. If you just call them and have a problem, they are right away and they can help us. Now I'm going to walk you guys down the production line here in Inning. Uh, it all begins with the housing and we've got Nancy in the background who is mounting the stator to the housing. We move down the line here and we've got uh, a completed stator in housing. And this is where Yelko now moves on to mounting the torque sensor into the drive unit. And actually on the subject of torque sensors, that is a big part of the HPR50 system. And that doesn't come without a significant amount of heritage and knowledge. So TQ is since 25 years developing and producing electronic systems for all different industries. And we have like 85% of all ships in the world are driven by TQ technology as well. I could keep on moving forward a lot and a lot about medical or Mars rovers or satellites. All that is happening here. This is a huge benefit for us that we have all this R&D know-how at TQ, but also the production know-how we have here in-house helps us a lot to build new e-bike systems. Let's put some scale and some reality into that. Now, these super, super high-end machines, whilst yes, they do produce circuit boards for most of the world's aircraft and cargo ships and satellites. It's actually the same technology that goes into producing the board for the HPR 50 motor. And it comes off the same production line as it would an Airbus 380. Well, that's some pretty hefty heritage going on there, I have to say. But what about the tech, the e-bikes, the stuff that we love? Well, how about this for a statement? We are TQ Drives and we've come to turn the bike world on its head. Now that's a pretty hefty statement, but remember that behind these walls, TQ have been making motors ever since 2008. You might've seen our exploits on the TQ HPR 120S motor, which is a much more powerful motor. But when it comes to the stuff of the moment, the state of the art TQ motors, it's the HPR 50, which is very much of the moment. It comes on the Trek Fuel EXE, and um, it has actually been in development for a few years now. Yeah, so the, the idea has been around for probably three, three and a half years, something like that. And back at that time, light e-mountain bikes or light e-bikes in general weren't a big thing. People were really questioning the whole segment and not seeing its potential. And uh, it was different in our case. We had a lot of discussions and uh, re really valuable test time and test rides with, uh, with Trek. And um, together we really saw the potential in this and we pretty soon found out that we could make this lightest and smallest motor. And then um, it was just the natural consequence for us that it needs to be silent. 
Like if you don't feel and you don't see that it's an e-bike, then the noise shouldn't be the last factor reminding uh, yourself and everyone around you that you're sitting on an e-bike. Apart from this pristine environment here, we definitely had to get our hands dirty in the field. And I mean, we did a lot of test trip also with our customers. For example, we had this amazing trip to Moab when everything kicked off. We all stayed together in one big house. Uh, Riley and I were just cooking pasta the whole uh, night for the team. So the engineers were putting their hands together, analyzing data, talking about riding experience, uh, drinking beer, and all that helped to really get the team together and create something new. Besides the, all the technology, I think this is a very important part of our business, really understanding how bikers feel in their environment. Well, interesting stuff. And yes, I can see that there is a cultural element to mountain biking, but I'm sure you guys are keen to get behind the scenes to the making of this motor on the Track Fuel ET. Okay, folks, we are back on the production line. And yes, don't fear, I'm not gonna be putting your motors together. Now, if there's one thing about this uh, unit, it's that it's meant to look, ride, and sound like a mountain bike, which is actually quite different to the HPR 120, which has been assembled in the background here. Now, moving down the line, we've got Marco on the main board. And this piece of kit here, which is arguably the secret behind the technology, which is, the harmonic pin ring. Time to talk to Tony Rosberger. Now lots of e-bike motors are comprised of cogwheels and planetary gears. TQ say these are bulky, heavy and clunky and of course have a lot of moving parts which can break or are possibly noisy. Gears need space and add to weight and that's where TQ scores. It has little installation space. So what makes this so special? In two words, harmonic pin ring. Ah, that's three. We are now going to meet the man behind the harmonic pin ring, a musician, former stuntman, motocrosser, and mechanical genius, Tony Rosberger. I was always, always imagined about uh, how is it possible to bring more T's in tension? And how could the gear system be when you have all T's in tension? So there were so many uh, sessions at the piano where I stopped playing and uh, worked out some ideas. There were so many nights where <laughs> I waked up and oh, uh, where's some paper to write it down that I can go on sleeping and don't forget it. Um, in the end, it's the summary of um, these sessions, these uh, ideas. The special thing is, um, it is a gear system you have um, more T's in tension. So if you imagine a simple gear, simple gear or two cogwheels, you, you make the transmission in the power transmission in one or two T's. And in the end, the harmonic pin ring drive is the solution. It is a gear system where all T's are in tension. The electric motor has to work together with the rider. And the higher the ratio, the more far away is the rider from the motor. And if you reduce the ratio, you are nearer at the rider, right? But um, that means you lose power, you lose, you get more weight. If you're able to build, in principle, very high density torque and high power motors with less space, then you can use it also. So that means you make the motor too small and make it a little bigger because of natural feeling, because of it's near at the rider. In the end, the natural ride feel is the composition of all the parts, the gear system, the torque sensor, and even uh, special motor, the freewheel clutches. In the end, it's the combination of all. Wow, this is all incredibly precise, but then again, that's a key part in the design of a motor where tenths of a mill matter, which is less than a hair's width. Meanwhile, back on the production line, we've got Anthony, who is closing the system by means of a gasket, and I do believe they're T20s. Moving down the line, we've got the crankshaft, which has been inserted into the motor. And finally, we've got Jay-Z, 
who is sealing the system before the final part of the process, which we'll come to in a bit. The HPR50 is a high torque density unit, which means a lot of torque, little weight and volume. The drive unit is 1.8 kilos, delivering up to 50 newton meters and a peak power of 300 watts in this compact lightweight package. Oh, and the motor is pretty much silent with what TQ describe as a no frills durability. How then does this translate onto the trail? It's not just the hardware, remember, it's the software, the sensors too. We like to call it natural ride feel. And the secret to our natural ride feel is our harmonic pin ring transmission. It's TQ patented technology. It's completely unique to the e-bike market. And um, even that is, is one big part of it, but it's, it's so much more than that. It's the software, it's how does the motor um, follow the rider input, it's the sensors, it's, um, it's all of that tied together. It's the whole package and the seamless integration into a bike. Um, that makes this special uh, natural ride feel. Wow, exhausting, but nevertheless a great insight. And it really did show the importance of good communication between development and production, which leaves one part of the process left, and that is end of line testing. I think it's time over to Julian. That's the end of line testing. We take the motor, it runs for seven minutes. We're testing temperature, efficiency, the software, and a lot more other things. After pass, we take the motor, put it into the box, and go off the track. Ah yes, those motors are very much on their way to track. But remember, that is for the current production track fuel AXE. But there's actually a backstory to it. The development, the R&D of this bike goes back more than three years. And it's a story where the guys from Bavaria met up with the guys from Wisconsin out in Moab, where they went through the whole development process of this bike. So we're not just talking about the motor and the battery and the display and the remote, we're looking at the geometry and the sizing and the feel of this bike. So a really interesting story. And that's actually what we'll turn to next week on EMBN, where we give you guys a proper in-depth look on how this motor, this battery, the system delivers out on the trail. That's it from now. I'm sure you'll agree, a very interesting insight from behind the walls out here in Bavaria.